Hello, everybody. My name is Douglas Arnold Armstrong. I'm the official head honcho here at Happy Texas Reviews. Thank you if you guys are watching the live stream. If you guys are just watching after the stream ends, thank you guys also so much for watching. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, join up as a group member if you have not already. And in today's review, we are talking about Harry Potter, number five, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Alrighty. So this is going to be a really interesting review because up to... Order of the Phoenix came out. Um, I had never seen a Harry Potter film. Um, I had read the books. I just didn't actually give a hoot and holler to watch the film versions. Because honestly, I ended up seeing the trailers. And I'm just like, not interesting. I'll stick with the books. Um, one summer I went down to Arizona. And I was there for a week or so with some family during the summertime. And, um, you know, they had this, like, theater that, um, it was the only theater, and it was, like, an hour or so away from town, and it was so a special type of theater where they only had one screen. So, you know, you walked into the building immediately, you buy your concessions and tickets all at one place, and then you have these double doors on the side of the concession stands where you also buy your tickets. You walk in, and boom, there's your theater, and you just have a seat. And there's like it's like 300 seats, and so they only show one movie at a time. And it was opening night for Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And uh, my family that was down there in Arizona, they're like, yeah, you know, I know for a fact that you know you enjoy watching Harry Potter. I'm like, I've never seen a Harry Potter film. <laughs> You're read the books, and they're kind of shocked at that. I'm like, honestly, the first four Harry Potter trailers have an interest to me, and I've seen like up to that point, I saw bits and parts of some of them at people's houses or on TV and whatnot, and they just didn't all that interest me from what I saw. I went and saw Harry Potter, and I actually got hooked on the film versions. <laughs> so, yeah, it took the fifth film for me to actually care about watching the movies. And then, of course, I went back and watched the first four and Order of Phoenix, and then I was just excited. I was a little excited for Half-Blood Prince, but because I had read the book, I knew that Half-Blood Prince was probably going to be really difficult for them to do a film adaptation and if you've seen Half-Blood Prince, you know how bad that movie is. <laughs> but we'll get to that later um, in the next review or so. So, yeah, just really, I have a lot of fond memories when I watch Order of Phoenix just because it brings back that experience of going to Arizona and seeing it on that screen. Um, funny thing is, is because it was opening night, it was midnight, and this was my first movie that I ended up seeing in a midnight release. <laughs> um, and I gotta be honest with you, I crashed about halfway through. I mean, this movie is two hours and 22 minutes long, and there's, I, I like, I looked at my auntie and my brother and my mom and cousins and whatnot, and I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to survive this. <laughs> there's no way I'm staying awake, Can I crash about halfway through. And then I don't remember who it was. So one of my cousins, I think they nudged and woke me up towards the ending so I could not miss the finale, you know, where Sirius Black gets killed and all that stuff. And, you know, Voldemort versus Hagrid. I'm not Hagrid, uh, Dumbledore. So I made sure I was awake for that part. <laughs> so I got to see the ending and see how it led into the next one. So, all right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the positives and negatives and give you guys my final review score. Um, so Order of the Phoenix came out in 2007, and honestly, this is the first full dark Harry Potter film, and it's both a positive and a negative. Um, I like it because unlike with Goblet of Fire, this film knows it needs to have a darker tone. It can't have room for any more childish nonsense. That's what the first three did, and that's what the beginning of Goblet of Fire did. Goblet of Fire second half started leaning into the darker side of the Harry Potter universe. Order of the Phoenix is like, all right, enough more child nonsense, enough world building. Let's start tearing things down. Let's getting prepared for the war. And that's what this film is all about. Um, I also enjoyed the fact that we get to see the Dementors return, Professor Moody, and a lot more um, characters from past films also return. Um, 
<laughs> Let's talk about Dark Arch Teacher in this film. I both hated and was happy with the cruel pink <laughs> Dark Arch Teacher that works for the Ministry of Magic. And I just got to say, she got what was coming to her, but I kind of wanted a lot more to come to her because <laughs> she was the definition of... of irritating to the bones to watch on screen and but they did an amazing job capturing what she was like in the book and translating that into film they did a great job i just best annoying dark arts teacher yet um i liked that we got to see the order of the phoenix's secret headquarters i think they did an amazing job with that from translating from book to the film we also get to see a lot more serious black and a of course, you know, big spoiler warning, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen the movie for some reason, Serious Black dies. <laughs> All right, you were warned. Uh, um, this film also dives a lot more into the connection between Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort's mental connection, and it teases of the future of why Harry Potter has his scar and whatnot. So if you've seen Half-Blood Prince and The Deathly Hallows, then you know what actually is truly truly going on in this film when Voldemort is inside of Harry Potter's mind, and you get to understand a lot more of that. So, like, if you watch Half Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows, come back and watch Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix makes a lot more sense. There's a lot of encrypted messages and stuff in this film, and until you watch the last, you know, films in the series, Order of the Phoenix can be a really cryptic and confusing and you're like what what is this leading up to and it's like you gotta wait three more movies to get the answer <laughs> so it's really cool in that way um, i also love the new characters that they introduced luna lovegood she's just sweet and smart and she's just full of energy and wisdom at the same time and i really enjoyed that character um the biggest lesson in this film obviously is that Friendship and family connections are extremely important in order to win any battle and win any war. And I think that's going to lead, I mean, I know it will lead, but it's going to lead um, into, unfortunately, a lot of friends and family members probably dying in the finale. Um, I also like the fact that the showdown took place in the Ministry of Magic. I really enjoyed that scene, the whole thing, you know, Sirius Black dying and then the um, showdown between um, Voldemort and Hagrid. Why did he saying Hagrid? Dumbledore. Hagrid <laughs> doesn't fight anyone. He got Hagrid on the brain. Um, I like seeing that. Um, there is a big magical battle in Showdown, but it's more of about the fact that it's a showdown of the power over one's minds and what is more powerful in the world, vengeance and wanting absolute power and control over the world, or love, friends, and family. Which one's more powerful? And which one do you have more of in your mind and you allow to be expressed? Um, like I said, this film, this film is basically showing the beginning stages of the training and preparation of the upcoming war that will take place both in and out of Hogwarts. And honestly, I'd encourage you guys to watch this movie a hundred times over. I, I own it and I, I always enjoy watching this film. Um, personally, um, it's to me where the Harry Potter books and universe go just full blown dark, like I said, and I really enjoy it for that. Um, what else? Um, lastly, for positives, amazing CGI throughout, amazing CGI and special effects, special effects, especially in the final showdown. Um, and it was really cool, like I said, to see Dumbledore, Harry Potter, Voldemort, the Order of the Phoenix, Death Eaters, all colliding for the first time. And of course, you know we'll see them see them collide in the for, in the future. Um, for negatives, um, like I said, this movie has a very dark tone. Um, but, you know, you can have a dark tone movie and you can still throw some jokes in there. There's very, very, very few jokes in this film. I think there was maybe like two or three. I just kind of wanted maybe a couple more just to make it a little lighter. But I can understand, you know, they wanted this film to be dark and, well, mission accomplished. Um, I'm also confused as to why Snape is part of the Order while he has been and continues to be nothing but cruel and irritating towards Harry Potter. 
I mean, I know the outcome in Deathly Hallows, but if you haven't seen the film or read the book, then you're like, why is he like this? It's really confusing. He keeps being on the good side, but he's doing bad things. It's really weird. Um, also, using torture devices to discipline anyone is completely inhuman. Um, I'm referring, of course, to the dark arts teacher professor's torture pen. Um, I don't care how mean you are or how cruel you are. There's, you, you just don't do that to kids, especially a 12 year old. You're, you're the definition of a B if you have to do that to prove any point. Um, you just you know, you just don't do that. Torture is not discipline. Um, also, Harry Potter's love story is externally short and unnecessary. He falls in love with somebody, and then she ends up, you know, breaking um, trust and gives up the uh, Harry the Hogwarts little training school session thingy. And I'm just like, well, that was unnecessary. I wonder who Harry Potter's going to fall in love with at the end of all of this. And we all know it's going to be Ginny Weasley because that makes perfect sense, I guess. Um, also, I don't understand this. And I know I've said this in my past Harry Potter reviews. I don't understand why Harry Potter doesn't use his vault full of gold to buy a, everyone awesome Christmas presents. I, I, I just don't understand why everyone has forgotten that Harry Potter has a Bolt full of gold sitting at the magic bank on Diagon Alley. I'm like, why is everyone wearing all these raggedy sweaters? Like, I'm like, Harry Potter, you have a vault full of gold. Buy your friends some good Christmas presents, dude. <laughs> really? Uh, it just knowing that he has a vault full of gold. And they show that in Sorcerer's Stone, and they, like, they, like it's a ten-minute scene or so in the film, and they talk about it a lot in the books. Like, I don't understand why people forget that he has this. Like, if you have gold, spend some of it. Like, I don't mean like spend it all, but spend some, please. <laughs> I just don't. I know that's just one thing in Harry Potter. I've always never understood why they forget this little detail. <laughs> like, I understand the purpose of having raggedy Christmas clothes, but it, don't introduce something that can contradict and fix that type of problem if you really want something to be old. I just, just, I, uh, all right, I'm moving on. It's just hurt my head now. With that, guys, I'm going to give the Order of Phoenix a 9.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.